Let me guess. The state called, and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy that? Ghetto culture is not black culture. I'll settle that right now. Netflix has done the unthinkable. They have degraded, insulted, and pretty much dismantled the wholesome, family-focused, classic series, Good Times. They've turned Good Times into a mix of Bebe's Kids and Boondocks. It all started with my grandfather, James Evans. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. I just want to let you know, I'm going to take good care of Greg. <laughs> Now look at who executive produced this garbage. Yeah, I called it garbage. This is just a trailer and it's already glorifying the worst aspects of ghetto culture that people have applied and made it seem like it's synonymous with black culture. Look at the executive producer. Steph Curry had the audacity to produce this monster of a cartoon show. This is worse than the Proud Family because what this does, this shows you where we are as a society and where we are in the black culture. A show like Good Times could not survive today because you will have to make it. Why do all the black shows have to be so vulgar, so debaucherous, so full of lawlessness to the point to where it is considered black? Who is pushing that agenda? Who is doing that? And the fact that Steph Curry would put his name on this is insulting. You have repeated the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what count. Stereotypical. The young black boy is dumb and stupid. The mom has golden hair, blonde hair. And the teacher's smoking. A black teacher who's smoking. Look at all these. Boy, they hit on every single stereotype just in this trailer. What kind of feet you working with? Dear black, heavenly. Now, this is probably the most blasphemous part of this trailer. Just watch how they depict my Lord and Savior in this trailer. It's for you. Look at that. God has pink fingernails. You have to see what they're doing with this. You have to see who's behind this, what agenda they're pushing. They're pushing so many different things. They're pushing black women over black men. They're pushing feminism. They're pushing a watered down, seeker friendly version of Christianity. They're preaching this cultural Christianity stuff with the black Jesus. And look at this. They're effeminizing God and effeminizing and making Jesus seem like he's lazy up there playing video games with the angels. Look at that. You got hood Jesus up there. New phone. Who this? Everything. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Now look at this. This is why I say it's baby's kids. A drug dealing baby. A drug dealing baby. Looking like he's a miniature version of Cisco. Who in their demonic mind decided to make this show? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Who in their demonic mind decided this show is straight up demonic? Who in their mind decided to even write this stuff? Childish man, bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. Now here we go. Instead of talking about personal responsibility, instead of talking about the lack of fathers in the community, instead of talking about how we have allowed things, how black churches have allowed things to happen in the black community because people have not been taught the truth of the gospel. Nah, it's time to blame the system. Blame Whitey. The system, they put the guns and drugs on the streets. But who, that's a cop out. 
If they did put the guns and the drugs on the street, did they force you to shoot each other? Did they force you to take it? Did they force you to sell it? No, they didn't. Now, I will say they have created the environment to compel people to do that because of these policies, but they didn't force you. See, when people make statements like that, that implies they think that black folks have no agency, that black people can't think for themselves. They are just animals that can't think critically or logically. That's ghetto. That's ghetto culture. Why we gotta be the most vulgar? Why? Why? Somebody please answer me that. Why does a black cartoon have to be vulgar? The revolution would not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws, can't you just enjoy that? What do you got? Elon Musk in the back now? No, Mike. The truth is, we're the Evans of Luke. No, you're the Evans of Ghetto. You're the Evans of debauchery. You're the Evans of this culture that is not black culture. You're the, you're the Evans of this agenda that they're pushing to make black people think that being black means acting a fool. Being black means being ignorant. Being black means having children out of wedlock. Being black means you don't take a personal responsibility. That's what you are. What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. There you go. There you go. Black folks are constantly struggling. You see that? You see the imagery there put into the minds of young black people. I, I would think this is not marketed to children based upon some of the things I've seen. So they're putting this in the minds of black people, reinforcing this notion that America systemically racist, that black people can't do nothing because the system is against them. Wait a minute. The baby, little baby, and baby, baby. Too many babies around this crib. This is horrible. And I'm glad to see that some black folks on Twitter recognize that this is trash. This is ghetto culture. This does nothing for the uplifting of flourishing in America, let alone the black community. Here's the first one. Blasphemous. Good times represented family, faith, morals, and lessons. It had meaning with the laughter and comfy it brought. And to attempt to poison that with the current debauchery and ghetto culture is unforgivable. And it tells you where we are as a society. My family and I will not be tuning in. Amen, sister. I feel you on that. Let's look at another one. If I say that black parents have a responsibility to ensure their children are in school, I am a coon sellout. I don't like black people. Shaking my head. That's right. Black folks in the hood will more identify with this stupid cartoon than it would somebody getting out there owning their own lives, taking responsibility for who God created them to be, following the success sequence. They'll see you as a coon. They'll see you as a square. They'll see you as a sellout. They'll see you as a Uncle Tom, even though Uncle Tom was the hero of the story. But they'll call you those kind of names. They say you're trying to act white. That's how poison in the mind black people have become. And here's another one. Boycott Netflix, good times. This continual depiction of our community as ghetto, poverty stricken, and stereotypical tropes is psychologically, yeah, what you meant to say is psychological warfare, anti-black, and racist. They should all be ashamed of themselves, all of them. Yes, it is psychological warfare. It is planting these seeds in the minds of black people that all you are are poverty stricken, ghetto, ignorant, Stupid. You cannot do anything because the system holds you down. You have nothing going for you in life. You have no hope. You have no hope. And so the Bible talks about hope deferred makes the heart sick, meaning that when a person has no hope, they are sick in their heart. They are sick physically and they're sick spiritually and they're sick emotionally. And that leads to the destruction and the decay that we're seeing in the community because people don't have hope because they're receiving messages like this. And here's the last one. Black people reacting to that Good Times cartoon remake. That's a classic scene from Good Times. I say it over and over and over again. What has happened to the black community in the inner cities is intentional. Things like this 
reinforce the agenda that people are pushing. The agenda is to create so much animosity and angst within black folks that they are used as pawns in the war that these Marxists and these communists want to wage are waging against America to fundamentally transform it, to destroy America and remake it in a communist Marxist image. Black people are the useful idiots that these people are putting out here to accomplish their goal of revolution. And so it's up to us sound minded people to speak the truth in love to the hood ghetto culture and say, no, there's a better way. We are not victims. We are empowered for greatness. 